Yeah, they may have had instructions, but my dive was pretty nice fish, huh? Yeah. All right. From one professional to another. This is a friend of mine, Sarah, a conversation I had with her. She's a professional camera woman. She goes underwater and she films people on their first dive or people that just want to be photographed underwater. And she's a professional at putting it all together, whether it be during a day dive or a night dive. Personally, you're never ever gonna catch me going out there on a night dive. Here's Sarah. Music in the background, very special part of the show today. Sarah, how are you? I'm fine, thank you very much. All right. You've been, before we get into what you do, how long have you been here in Charm? Well, I started coming out as a tourist and decided to take one year between two jobs from uh, England. And suddenly I found it was four, five, six years. I've never heard that story before. <laughs> much better than living and working in uh, London. Uh, what, what, what did you used to do in London? I was a deputy head for an art school. Okay, from an art school, I know what Sarah does. Why? The second time actually when diving, she took, you're a camera woman, underwater camera woman. So from art school to camera woman, how? I did uh, some of my degree at university was film and TV. And I've been diving in England about 16 years. And then I decided to take my instructors so I could teach other people to dive. Now straight from the beginning, you wanted to, you wanted to photograph them under the water or you taught first of all how to dive? First of all, it was teaching. I come from a teaching background, so instead of teaching art, I'm teaching people to dive. I mean, it's a fantastic job. Anybody would want it. Uh, also, I was taking photos underwater, and a lucky chance somebody was selling a video camera. So I start to take this on the dive. People start to see me with the camera. and then Paolo Coelho would say, destiny. Watch for the destiny. Oh, there's a camera. Here I go. It certainly is a dream job. <laughs> okay, you do day... Uh, day uh, day dives and night dives for someone like me who stays on top of the water most of the time what is the difference between shooting a day and a night one can I say it was dark? 
Okay, that's the end of the, yeah, I'll, okay, no, but, but how do you see, under, for me, I presume you can't see underneath. We have uh, underwater torches, uh, you always take two with you in case one is broken, and it means that you can concentrate on a small area, because obviously everywhere is uh, black. But during the day, how far does the water go down, uh, the light go down anyway? You can, uh, out here it's lovely, I mean 30, 40 metres you can still see a lot. Uh, we have a limit for our diving, so it's always going to be light enough for you to see. Tell me, um, my wife Ellen has told me times she's gone diving and people scratch her to try to get out and you've ever had any crazy situations like that? No, I'm a very calm, conservative diver. They all love me, I make it very easy. So it's just my wife then, that's what you're saying? No comment. Ah, <laughs> very diplomatic woman. All right, for those watching maybe from abroad, um, you've been here a long time. What's your feeling about people visiting our home here? I love it. It's why I'm here. I came as a tourist, first of all. The reefs here are beautiful, the fish and the colours and everything. I don't know why everybody doesn't come. That's not a bad plug, is it? That's a pretty good plug. Thank you very much for talking to us, Sarah. All right, I hope you enjoyed so far the show Bella Egizzo. Um, remember, if you want to get hold of us here, the address is Nile, uh, sorry, Bella Egypt Nile TV. Bella Egypt Nile TV at gmail.com. If you have any ideas for a new show or just have a comment or just want to chat, or if you want to ask questions about your upcoming vacation or something that happened on your vacation, any of that stuff. All right, a little bit of bio here on the most famous ship we have in the Sinai for divers to go down. Its name is Hisselgorm. Now, the SS Thistlegorm was built by Joseph Thompson and Sons in Sunderland and launched April 1940. That was during the Second World War. She was powered by a triple expansion steam engine, well, whatever that is, and she was privately owned uh, 
and financed partly by the British government and was classified as an army freighter. That's probably why she went down. Now, the vessel, not a lot of people know this, made three successful voyages after her launch. The first was to the US to collect steel, rails and aircraft parts. The second to Argentina for grain and the third to the West Indies for rum. Now, prior to her fourth and final voyage, she had undergone repairs in Glasgow. Now, listen to this. When she set off this time, she was going to Alexandria in Egypt. The vessel's cargo was trucks, armored vehicles, motorcycles, guns, ammunition, Wellington boots, two steam engines that were meant for the Egyptian railway. And the day she went down was the 6th of October in 1941. Now, Jacques Cousteau did find her in 1956 and pulled up a few treasures, but then mainly, beside the you know, local fishermen, everybody forgot about the boat. It wasn't, they say it was rediscovered. It wasn't rediscovered because the fishermen knew about it all the time. But as Charm became more popular, of course, more and more people went out and uh, that's why it is the most famous diving site and New York Times magazine labeled it as one of the 10 top dives in the world for sunken boats. And there you have it. Okay, here we go. The spelling of Thistlegorm. Thistle, T-H-I-S-T-L-E-G-O-R-M. It is one of the most wrongly spelt words ever and the question here which uh, which I asked you at the beginning of the show before I leave is what were the colors hieroglyphics were written in two colors what were they they were and red and black not white or pink or blue I, the people I have to work with here I tell you it ain't easy, but I do my best. Hope you enjoyed the show. Have a great week. See you, <laughs> See you next week. Bye-bye.